Hi, I'm Nate with Average Jack Archery Pro Shop and Range here in Phillipsburg, PA. And today we're gonna to do a string and cable change on this beautiful Elite Cairo here in the Midnight Copper. We have some uh, fresh uh, America's Best Bowstrings threads to put on this. Uh, this bow is a good friend of mine, Jeremy Dinsmore, over at Antler Up Podcast. I've done a couple, uh, uh, done a podcast with him. You can definitely go check out his content. He does great stuff over on his socials and of course in the Sportsman's uh, Empire Podcast Network. We're gonna uh, change out the threads here. These winner's choice are getting a little bit frayed up. Uh, we're going to put a little bit of color on here with some electric blue strings. So uh, come along. It should be pretty, uh, pretty fun. So Jeremy already has this bow set up exactly the way he likes it. He doesn't shoot with a kisser button or a nose button, but if he did, uh, they would still be on here. So this is like if you bought a bow into my shop and it's set up exactly to you already. I don't have to do any rigmarole with it. So I'm going to automatically, first things first, is I'm going to note he has soft knots inside the D-loop. I'm going to start my measurements from the inside of that soft knot. And I want to pick a number on my tape that makes sense. So, you know, I could try to measure the exact center of the peep in the 16, 30 seconds. Don't do that. I see that right now the bottom of the whole peep comes to, from the inside of his soft knot, comes to five and a sixteenth. That makes a good number. Uh, the exact center of where the tie goes in is five and a half. That'd be a good number. Just something like that. And then we can fine tune it from there uh, to get exactly where he needs to be. He's here with me actually today. So uh, we can work on that and set this up. So I go right to the box or to the string or wherever the heck it is. Grab a pen. And I'm going to go five and a sixteenth to the bottom. And I always have that right then and there. Like I said, I'll write it on the string bag, I'll write it wherever, even if it's a scrap of paper, just something so that way I have that number before I start cutting everything off. If it's also super important, which I think it is for Jeremy, I'm gonna take note of his D-loop length here from the underside of the string. And at relaxed from the underside of the string, again, I wanna keep this a simple number, from the underside of the string to the inside of the relaxed D-loop, I see is three quarter inches. So I'll make note of that as well and we have soft knots top and bottom, so I'll make sure I tie that back on there. But now at this point, we have a nice Hamsky Raptor peep in here. I'll cut this out, and then uh, we'll start taking everything off. I try to, if at all possible, I do have razor blades here, but I try to, if at all possible, these are just cheap little side cutters, crafting side cutters. You can get from a craft store, I get mine from Harbor Freight, something like that, and they're really good at clip and serving. You don't have to you know, take a razor blade and go up and down the, the string itself, particularly if you're just trying to move it. You're not doing a string cable change, you really run the the risk of accidentally slicing off some strands. This I can just cut right around the groove that's in the center of the peep. And once I get all that freed up, now the peep is freed up. Okay, so that just keeps everything from getting cut. If you were trying to save these strings, we're not trying to do that. I'm just going to add enough tension here so I can pop this out. That's all I need to do there. And again, I'm not adding so much tension here that this can't, like, remember, this bow would come way in if I was actually drawing it right, so I'm not adding a whole bunch of extra tension here in the press, just making sure my fingers are lined up, my limbs look okay, right, and all I have to do is just add another turn or maybe turn and a half, and I can start pulling this stuff off. Now, if you were going to save it, let's say, for example, the, uh, the customer uh, wanted to save these string cables because they're in good shape. Uh, you're not going to toss them. Try to when you take things off. This has a roller guard here, so I'm going to keep it stuck in the center for a minute. Um, while you're taking stuff off, try not to let it untwist too much. If you lose a twist here and there, that's okay, but don't try to let it just run completely straight out. I just take them and shove them into the holes here in the limb by the string stop. That's no problem. Or by the, uh, not the string stop, but the uh, limb dampeners. We do have a roller guard here, so I'm going to remove the uh, piece for that. All right, so I want to show you something that is very important when it comes to a lot of the modern day bows. So Hoyt, uh, Matthews, PSC, um, Elite, Athens, Bowtech, they've all gone to a binary cam system of some sort. Now with the Elites, with the Athens, with the Bowtech, they don't have any sort of yokes in here. Uh, so PSC has an interior yoke system, so it's obvious that the yokes go on the inside. Uh, but Hoyt's, Bowtech's, uh, Athens, and Elite, they have a binary cam system, a three-track binary. So one ca cable goes on one side, one cable is going to go on the other side. And determining, because since both cables are symmetric, uh, both top and bottom, they're the same length rather, um, it's important to know which one goes where. So on this cable, and I have the, the ends pinched here, it is obvious that one piece of serving is longer. It runs longer than the other one. So what I want to do is I want to install that longer piece of serving, that end of the string that's longer, 
into the side of the cam that gets picked up, right? So just take a step back and think about this for a second. If it's your first string cable change, the bow gets pulled this way, and this cam's gonna rotate like this, and this cam's gonna rotate like this, right? Because that's the way the bow's gonna get pulled. So the cam on the inside here is going to get picked up into the module, right? Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. FedEx delivery. So as it gets picked up into the module, that's the longer part, okay? So one part is gonna get picked up, that's the longer piece of serving, and one is gonna get let out because the other one's gotta pick it up, and that's gonna be the shorter piece of serving. So as I take off the paper clip here, try not to lose a whole bunch of twists, and I always like to start, if I can, with the longer one. Stick that there. Shorter end's gonna go and it's gonna get let out, right? And again, think about this. If you didn't take a picture, you're not familiar with it. This cam is gonna get pulled towards the center. This cam's gonna get pulled towards the center. So I wanna make sure I wrap this around the string post of the cam so that way it gets let out. So I'm gonna install it this way from the top. And if you think about this, it's gonna get pulled this way and it's gonna let out, okay? If I installed it the other way, I'll just show you real quick, it's gonna get picked up and that's wrong, it's gonna bind. It'll actually, your, your bow will feel like it can't move because it's literally, while this one's trying to pull on it, this one's also trying to pull on it, and your bow's gonna lock up. It's not good, and that's a correctly installed cable. And it's okay if it's in there loose right now, it's not a big deal. Second cable, making sure it's on the back side of the string stop here. No cables will ever be installed on this side of the string stop. They're always gonna be on the back side. Go from the top. So then I'll just kinda add a little bit of tension here, make sure everything looks good, looks normal. Depending on the make of the bow, modern day bows, the cables are always gonna cross underneath the roller guard. Some older style bows will actually cross up here because this uh, the cable guard is actually really low on the bow. That's a super old style. Most modern day bows, they're gonna fit right here. So I'm just gonna stick them on the rollers before I put the block back on. Make sure everything looks good. Everything looks great. So I'm gonna go ahead and install my tension or my uh, retainer block. On modern day bows with a string stop, you're gonna have a piece of serving, unless it's a Matthews. Matthews, they'll run the serving all the way up, and I'll explain how to see that in a second. But here I have this secondary little piece of serving right here in the middle of the string. And that's obviously gonna go on the string stop, so I know this end goes to the bottom cam. And strings, when they're fresh out of the package, are real stiff. So don't worry if it's not sitting perfectly in the cam groove right now. It's nothing to panic about. Now, even though we added the exact amount of tension we needed to get the old strings off. We're gonna actually have to add more tension because these are so stiff, they're so fresh. They haven't stretched at all. The serving makes them real kinked up. So we'll see here how much tension we need to add. You can see I just don't have enough to get it around this cam. So we're gonna add a few more cranks. Again, nothing excessive. We're, we're not even, shoot, if you think about it, we're maybe like 10 inches into the draw cycle at the most. And these limbs would flex all the way into a 30 inch draw, so nowhere near it. And when you don't overpress it, it makes it easier just to pop everything into their groove. And that actually works out. So that's all the further in the draw cycle we've actually gone with the compression of the limb, right? So you don't have to reef this thing so it's nearly at full draw. You don't need anything crazy like that, okay? I'm checking to make sure everything's sitting in the cam grooves or around the string posts just by adding a little bit of tension. And then I will maintain this tension as I let the bow out. Before I let it all the way out, just make sure we have good tension. Didn't hear any pops or anything weird by not putting in the cam track all the way. We've now successfully done a string cable change. Now, going back to what I said earlier about the Matthews idea, Matthews serves this all the way up, right? But usually string builders, and I say usually, I mean nearly all of them that I've ever seen, will put a piece of serving or something in here, particularly if it's a one color string, to separate the exact center, because you want to put your peep in the exact center. So that way when the bundle stretch and pull, that peep doesn't have too much premature rotation. Uh, we're an America's best bow string dealer here in the shop. I've had great success installing them, uh, no issues there but it's nice that they put this in here so that way we can find the exact center later now we're going to go ahead and figure out our knocking height and for our d loop location so traditionally i like doing this with a t square e i use the ones by east and you can use carbon express whatever manufacturer you want because uh, it has the numbers on there and then i can line it up exactly the way i want with the burger hole um, so what i do is i hide this so it's exactly at the bottom edge of the burger hole so we're just sitting just a squidge in high right now not by much 
The nice thing about this is you don't need to level the bow, you don't have to put it in a vise. T-square is always going to be 90 degrees because it's snapped onto the string. Uh, so it saves you a good, good, good amount of money. I'm going to set that right at the bottom of the burger hole there. It's a little too low. And the leads are nice. They actually uh, machine this riser so that way you can almost see the burger hole as it sits exactly right there. So I know that that is my zero mark, so I'll take a silver sharpie. My zero mark is going to be the bottom of where my knock is going to sit. So I'm going to make a mark just a touch underneath that because I'm going to install a soft knot. And then I'm going to mark a little bit above it for now. We'll get uh, Jeremy's arrow out here and figure out exactly what we need. He's going to shoot pin knocks out of this bow for 3D season. So we might need to tie the soft knots a little bit tighter or looser depending on the size of the knock. But now that I have that on there, this T-square is done. <clears throat> Didn't need any levels, any vice. We're ready to tie on. Now to tie a soft knot, I like to use something that is a softer material. So this is B55. This is the same stuff that they use to make recurve strings. Um, it's really soft. It melts very, very nice, very, very clean. So what I'm going to do is on that silver sharpie mark, I'm just going to literally tie this around just a couple of overhand knots, one on the top, one on the bottom. Don't need a huge soft knot in here. Sometimes I see people get in trouble. They'll build a soft knot that's way too big. So tie an overhand knot on the top, overhand knot on the bottom. And what I've done is I'm going to stack these knots. So I started at the inside. Remember, the D-loop's going to come towards the center. I start on the inside, and I'm going to build another knot on the bottom side. Not right there. Not up the bottom and then just tie in a square knot here to finish it off. I like this B55. A lot of guys use, it's a Dacron style material, so um, you could use B50. Some guys use like Dacron fishing line. Something that has a good melt to it. I've used BCY 3D in the past. It's very strong uh, and it works really well for tying in peeps, tying in soft knots, but I find when it breaks, the whole system will fail. Uh, whereas this stuff, since it's kind of wax and has a good melting point, it just doesn't do it nearly as much. We're gonna grab one of Jeremy's arrows here. He's shooting the uh, new Ultras, uh, the 246. Like I said, he's got pin knocks installed. And pin knocks are traditionally really small. Um, so traditionally, you know, this compared to say, here's a Carbon Express knock, you can see the general size difference. Okay, clearly a much fatter knock in that Carbon Express. So this would be, if, I, if this was just a customer's bow and I figured they were shooting a standard diameter knock, I would just put that on there. But since we actually have Jeremy Zero, we're gonna use his. Okay. And like I said, I, tie, I, I made that silver sharpie mark, mark, sharpie mark on the top, so that way we have a little bit of uh, playing here, so that way I can see where I need to tie the other soft knot. <clears throat> Jeremy doesn't have a super long draw length. If you have a long draw length um, and you're shooting a big knock and you're shooting a short axle to axle bow, you definitely want to make sure you have enough play in here so that we don't crush it with the soft knots. You'll get some knock pinch and you'll have that issue where when you're drawing back, the arrow feels like it wants to rise up on the rest. That's never a good thing. Uh, you can get some weird tears through paper. Tie a soft knot here. And I've left myself about a 30 second, maybe. 30 second, maybe a fat 64th of play, not a whole lot. These soft nuts will um, crush down over time if you make it a little too tight, but they can only crush down so far. So I have one top and bottom, we can pull the arrow out. And again, now I'm building the other direction. So this one I start and built down, this one I'm start and build up. So that way I don't accidentally build into where the knock is gonna go and pinch it and we have a good established soft knot. Now, when you have soft knots like this, you actually have a point to measure from. And so before I put the D-loop on here, I'm actually gonna install the peep. Uh, and the reason why I'm gonna do that is because when you put the peep in here, it's gonna cause the bundles to pull apart and the D-loop's gonna twist. It's gonna turn one way or the other because it's attached to the serving, which is of course attached to the strands. And that's where people get D-loop twist, and then they're sitting there pushing the D-loop knots around, they're mucking up the center serving. Don't do that. If you're gonna tie a soft knot in there, use that as your initial starting point if you're setting up a bow. Um, that was already set up in the past. And then you have a good place to start from and then you can install the peep and then you can figure out how much the string is gonna twist and all that good stuff. So what I'm gonna do, grab my measuring tape. I uh, undid the little loop they put in this so that way I can kind of move this serving up and down a little bit. 
so I can figure out a starting point. Going back to my measurement, I was five and one sixteenth to the bottom of the whole peep. And particularly with a bigger style peep, like these Hamsky Raptor peeps, or especially archery peep, uh, you'll notice you'll get a lot of string twist out of them, or D-loop twist out of them, rather, if you don't do this kind of preemptively. Add a little tension here to see where that sits. That's ironic, that peep came in real straight, that's nice. Take a measurement here. Five and a sixteenth to the bot. Oh boy. That's about perfect right there. So I'm just going to do myself a favor. Oop, not black. I'm going to use silver. Just make a mark right on the inside of the groove where the uh, color of the uh, string crosses through the, the uh, tie around part. I'm just going to do that here and here. Now this, this might need to be tweaked, right? We'll get Jeremy behind the bow and we'll tweak it a little bit if we have to. Uh, but now that I have that there and it's set and that was the original marking point, now I can go ahead and install a D loop. What color you want? that down. I try not to just stick it right into the into the flame. I kind of just pass the flame past it so it just melts the end and gets a nice uh, ball here. Let it cool for a second before I try to mash it down. And allowing that it doesn't stick to the lighter, doesn't goop up everywhere, we have a nice clean ball there to start with. Let it cool a little bit more. A three-quarter inch D-loop is pretty stock. Um, in terms of how a D-loop gets built. So it's maybe a touch on the longer side, but not too much. Pass around. Leave myself about an eighth inch of tag in, maybe a little bit more, so I can fluff it out and do the exact same thing. Again, trying not to catch it on fire, just kind of melting the end so I can squish it down. And you want to take a pair of needle nose, fine ones, right? If you can, if you can go ahead and do it, get yourself a good pair of actual D loop pliers. These are made by Viper. Lots of good industries out there. But to get this started, I like to kind of set this up. I'll explain why in a second. Just kind of cinch it so that way it's it's on there, but it's not moving. Let's see where we sit for for length. Yeah, that's gonna work out great actually. So right now it's sitting just a little bit over half an inch. When we stretch this out, it's definitely going to go that three-quarter length. What's important to note is how the string gets built is going to dictate how the peep is going to twist through the draw cycle. So very, 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 very rarely do I see the peep is starting straight, and then as you draw, the peep just stays straight the entire time. Usually it has a little bit of a twist through the draw cycle. And that's just how the bundles come together, how the serving comes together. It's very, very uncommon that it just comes back straight. So what I usually find is that on a uh, right-handed archer, which is obviously they're holding the bow this way, on a right-handed archer, it usually through the draw cycle is going to twist to the left. So I usually like to have it start to the right. However, ABB twists their strings the other direction. So gas, zebra, um, uh, uh, first string, other builders, they're going to actually have them the other direction, and so they will clock to the left a little bit uh, as they come back through the draw cycle. I know this ABB string is actually going to probably clock to the right a little bit because it's, it's actually twisted the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have this set up so that way when my D loop comes back straight, the peep is sitting off just a quarter turn, an eighth of a turn to the left. Because usually once that string settles in, it's going to, through the draw cycle, it's going to come back to the right. So I'm not going to add too much bias here, but that's a good place to start. And if we need to cut the D loop off because I'm wrong later, it's cheap and easy to do that. It's not a problem. Stretch that out. Measuring tape here. Yep, three quarters to the underside. Perfect. It's the exact same length. Love it. All right. So now that we have that installed, we're going to not tie anything in. We're going to have Jeremy draw this back, make sure it's at the right height, and then we'll tie it in the rest of the way. All right, so I came in close here to show you how I tie a peep in. So again, you can use uh, some sort of peep tying thread, BCY 3D inserting, something like that. I'm going to keep using that B50. Uh, I'm going to tie this peep in, and I like to tie in these bigger barreled peeps, the Raptors, the Insights. I like to tie them in. Um, the same exact way, which is actually starting up very high. I don't like to come in here, so here are the triangles, right? I don't like to come in here and pinch this because it'll cause peep rotation 
prematurely, particularly at full draw. So I actually like to come all the way out to where the triangles start, and then I'm gonna wrap down one leg, wrap around the center of the peep, and come down and wrap around the other side, okay? So you see my silver sharpen marks, so we're in the exact same spot we started. Get a nice long section of uh, 55 here. There are a bazillion ways to tie in a peep. You can do this method for non-big barreled peeps too, um, but I like this particular method for big barreled peeps. It just seems to work out really well. So I brought my tag ins uh, all the way clear back in behind this triangle here. And so I'm gonna start going ahead and wrapping over top to uh, get a constrictor knot. So I'm burying my tag end inside the strands of the peep. And you could do it five or six times here. Before I get to that triangle, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cinch it a little bit. Now I'm gonna take my tag end. I'm gonna pull my tag end back over. And I'm gonna start wrapping in front of it. Once, twice, three times. Cinch it down, okay? So I'm right at the beginning of that triangle there and that works out all right. Kind of put my tag in out of the way. Now I'm gonna start feeding it down through the triangle. I'm gonna wrap around the left side, then wrap around the peep, and then come around on the right side and do the exact same knot up here. How many times you do it down the legs is just really an aesthetic thing. You could do it three times with big gaps in between, seven times, whatever you got. I usually find like five or six works out really well. I like to cinch the first one cinch the first one up inside the triangle. And this B55, because it's waxy, it doesn't like to move. Just kind of constantly holding tension there with my index finger. So we'll do one. Two. So my fifth wrap has finished just inside the barrel of the peep here, all right? So what I'd like to do now to catch it and kind of squish it underneath this side so that way it's held under tension, I'm actually gonna go in the bottom triangle. And I'm not tying it on itself, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm gonna let it sit underneath that groove of the peep. So I'm just gonna kind of pop it. Let's sit in the groove of that peep right there. So now it's held, I could let go, right? So now, now the whole thing's not just gonna come undone. I'm gonna come over to the top, one wrap right through the middle barrel. Second wrap, now I'm gonna come up from underneath in the top triangle. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna wrap it around itself on the backside, okay? So I've come up through, now I'm gonna pull that forward. Okay, so now I've done the exact same thing. I've wrapped it around the, itself on the peep on this side, okay? So now it can't move. Again, I can just let go. And now I can start wrapping from the underside in, come down the right side leg. Again, I'm gonna seat this first one back up into itself so it's nice and tight. And now I'll start wrapping. So we did five up top. We'll do five down here to make it symmetrical. Not that it, it doesn't matter, it's all aesthetics. Now that I've come down through the, the uh, top, I'm gonna start wrapping around that bottom. Right there, I'm at the beginning of the triangle. Kind of pull it tight there. And we'll do one, two, three, four. And now we can start back serving, okay? So back serving is the act of building this constrictor knot from the back forward, okay? So got a nice long tag in. I'm going to, remember, so I'm going to be wrapping the back serve this way. So I need to make sure that this leg is coming off of the string. If I start wrapping over here, it's just going to actually start wrapping the string around itself. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to take the leg and put it on this side. So this leg is on towards the camera. This leg is now facing towards me. And then I'm gonna start taking my tag in and I'm gonna start wrapping it through the hole I just created. So one, two, three, four, five. And I know I just did that rather quickly, so I'll do it again real quick. As I undo all of my wraps here. Pushing it through that triangle. One, I always like to hold it there with my uh, ring finger. Two, three, four, Five. Now I have my tag in through here. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to start wrapping myself on the tag in. Notice how the wraps are coming off over here. If you're doing this and it keeps getting tight over here, you put the leg on the wrong side. So make sure you pay attention to that. Just wrapping right around. Holding some tension now on this loop here. So then I can kind of hold the knot together, grab my tag in, and I'm going to pull the loop into itself. 
add a little bit of a cinch so it doesn't go anywhere. Now I'm going to grab those straight needle nose pliers. You grab something with teeth, it's going to break the strands, and that's just no fun. So I'm just going to do a couple of wraps here. You don't have to reef on this. Just enough to get that knot to cinch, and this B55 is nice and waxy. It'll bind into itself, no problem. Don't worry about the peep kind of getting a little twisty on me there. That's not an issue. Take my lighter. Again, I don't like putting razor blades. If I just cut, I just cut it by uh, by burning it. I don't like to take a razor blade and cut it short. That's you get you do all this beautiful work in here, then all of a sudden you slice your string last second. Just melt it. So now at this point, what I would do is if the customer is present, which Jeremy is, I'm going to have him take this downstairs. I'm going to have him put at least a dozen arrows through it. That way, if there is any peep twist, it happens right here in the shop where we have a press available to him. And if we do have to add a twist to the string or half a twist to the string, we can cut the D-loop off and install a new D-loop with that slight angle then to get it to go through the draw cycle. Uh, but we'll uh, step off camera and do that for him. All right, so we took it downstairs, did some shots. Lo and behold, we got a little bit of peep twist. Uh, and like I said, it's going to end up traveling. So we are a little bit too far to the right now, but it's not enough, or excuse me, to the left. It's not enough, though, that we can add a twist or half a twist to the string. It's actually going to take it too far over. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut this D loop off and I'm going to position it so it's more in line with the peep. There's a little bit less angle difference between the two. Um, D loop material is cheap. Uh, and replacing a center serving is not. So sitting here and trying to push the knots around, uh, just don't do it. Uh, as a shop owner, from one Bowtech to anybody who's a Bowtech watching, just cut the D-loop off. Again, side cutters. You can just find that part of that wraps around the side of the D-loop here, done. No razor blades, no nothing, okay? Don't run the risk of damaging anything. And since that, we didn't have it reefed down, we didn't push anything around, center serving is basically untouched. So we're gonna grab some more D-loop material. This adds a little bit of extra time, you know, particularly if you're working in a shop and you've got 10 customers waiting. But trust me, this is way better than that customer coming back saying his peep twist, his D-loop's moving, his center serving is going to going south in the long run. So as I just have these knots kind of just seated, I'm just playing with that angle, right? So here it is perfectly up and down. We're just, just a squidge to the left, not a whole lot. About an eighth inch of tag in. I like to push the knots closed around the uh, legs here. Really pinches in that mushroomed out head. And now we have a little bit of tension, so now we can kind of figure out how that's going to sit with that peep. And that's looking really good right there. D-loop pliers on. Cinch it down. Check our length again. Boom, three quarters. Now we're going to put this on the draw board. We're going to check timing and I'll bring you over here and show you that. All right, so I have the bow here in the draw board, a little bit of tension so it stays exactly where it needs to be. Uh, I got the winch obviously behind me. Uh, and so now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to work it through the draw cycle till I see here is the top module. Bottom module is just out of frame here. And I'm going to check and see if they're touching at the exact same time. And obviously I have the scale here, we could check poundage, but I didn't start that way, so I can't turn it on now because it won't give me a good reading. Almost to the end, so I'm going to lock the winch in place. And we can see we have a gap up here. So we're about, you know, three-eighths up there. I think we're a little bit too close down here, but let's put it all the way back and find out. I took the winch one click over, and I can see some daylight. It's hard with that limb stop pad in there but I can see some daylight in there. We're probably about, I don't know, a fat eighth. And down here at the bottom, we are touching. So the bottom cam, and I'll make sure that the modules are set exactly the same uh, with their let off on these leads. Um, but it looks like to me so far that the bottom cam is running a little bit hot. All right, so at full draw, the top cam uh, was a little bit off and the bottom cam was touching first. I checked the module. They're both at line number four for the let off. So that's good. There's nothing wrong there. So that means this cam is out of time. So when you have a cam uh, that is out of time, you can either work on the cam that is running cold, which is the top cam, which is not hitting first or hitting at the exact same time, or you can run on the hot cam. I always like to run on the hot cam um, because when you run on the hot cam, you're actually adding a twist or half a twist to the cable that it picks up. So let's think about this again, going back to the beginning. 
This cable here gets let out, right? Remember the bow, you know, this cam rotates in. So the, this one's gonna be let out and this one down here is gonna get picked up by the module. What we wanna do is we wanna add a half twist or a twist to this one. I'm gonna start off by adding a full twist. That might be too much, okay? If you have to add more than a twist or a twist and a half, uh, you might have something wrong here. Just add enough tension that this is nice and loose. I'm gonna pop it off the bottom cam post. And sometimes you need to pop the string off the cam so you get a little bit more rotation out of it. There's no problem with that. So here's how it was originally sitting. I'm gonna look at the twists of the fibers here and make sure I'm twisting it in the correct direction. I'm gonna add a full twist. So I need to twist it this way. So there's half a twist. And there's the rest of the full twist. Okay, so we're right back to where we started but we've added a twist to that cable. So now I'm gonna go and reinstall it like that. String back in the groove. Add tension again to the string. Check bottom cam, check top cam. Everything looks good. Wind out the tension, put it back on the drawboard. All right, bow's back in the drawboard. Come up to our top cam. And that module touching it. Ooh, focus perfectly right there. Come down to our bottom cam. And it's perfectly touching. They are touching the exact same time this bow is now in time. Okay, so we're down here at the paper tuner. We're gonna stand about eight feet away from the paper. Make sure we have plenty of clearance behind the paper to the target bale itself. Uh, so that way when the arrow impacts, it doesn't accidentally impact and tear the paper weird. Uh, we're gonna shoot one, we're gonna make sure, uh, and then we can tune to that. We're gonna work on the set technology uh, on this elite. Uh, and if we need to work with that, we'll do that. Um, and if we need to do something more drastic, we'll do that, but we'll start off and see where we sit to start. So I like to tell people if you're new, or if you have your own shot, take an arrow or something and actually give them a point to aim at. So usually when you're aiming at 20 yards at eight feet, if you aim here, it's gonna hit about four inches low. So I'll say, hey, right there, put your pin right on that spot and actually shoot uh, like you're trying to hit a target. Okay. Come take a peek at this. All right, so here's the spot that I told them to aim at. And here's the tear through paper. I can see the point is up here. And there's, I got a fletch here, a fletch here, and a fletch here, which means that it is tearing down. Okay, so our knocking point might be a little bit on the high side. So we're gonna grab another arrow and confirm that it's doing the exact same thing. Okay. We wanna check all the arrows to see if they're all flying the same. Um, hopefully that is the case. And we have the exact same. And then I got, it's clearly going down. Here's fletch, 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 okay? So we can work with that. We're gonna shoot the last arrow, make sure. Yep, same thing, awesome. So all the arrows are doing consistently the exact same thing. So we're gonna work on rest height first. Since we have this tear is going down, uh, we always follow the fletchings when it comes to this. Since it's going down, that means our, our point is sitting too high. So we're gonna move the rest down a little bit. And if we didn't have the set technology or something like that, Bowtex, uh, Deadlock, or Athens AccuTune system, we would then move the rest to get that. But we're not gonna move the rest out of 13 16ths. Uh, we're gonna leave it exactly where it's at. We're gonna instead move it down a little bit, see what happens. Um, I always tell people, if you sometimes if you figure out a vertical travel issue, sometimes it actually works on the lateral ones as well. So we're gonna first by moving the rest down a touch, not too much to get that to come out. And if it's still the left, we'll play with the set technology. You were getting closer. Okay, we're getting closer. I like it. It's almost level. It's almost level. I'm gonna play with the set technology and see if I can't bring that over a little bit, so. Das. Bueno. <laughs> Does that, my friends, if you, if you, you guys gotta see this. The bullet hole. We'll do it with all the rest of the arrows, but that cannot get more perfect. So we're gonna do it with two other arrows and see what happens. So that is the exact epitome of three bullet holes. Perfect circle, one, two, three. Perfect circle, one, two, three. That is bang, bang, bang. All the arrows are flying exactly the same. It's exactly what we want. We have a tuned bow. All right, so we have a perfectly tuned Elite Cairo killing machine, 3D foam slaying machine. Uh, now it's interesting, so we're in here after hours. Jeremy owns all of his own stuff. He owns his own press, his own drawboard, all that cool stuff, but he still came down and wanted me to, to work on it. 
you know, and I just wanted Jeremy to briefly talk about that very quickly when it comes to setting up a boat. And it, he's perfectly capable of doing this himself, uh, but he still wanted to bring it down and have me uh, take a look at it and work on it. Yeah, absolutely, Nate. So, uh, number one, I'm very fortunate, very lucky enough to only live three minutes away yeah. from, from your shop. Uh, but like Nate said, I do have all my own equipment, but I do plan on on testing the waters this this upcoming spring and summer where we might shoot in the same type of 3D competition oh, yeah. shoots. And not that I don't trust myself, I just really wanted to go to the professional, right? Someone that uh, support your local uh, <laughs> support your local bow shop. Uh, and and I feel very comfortable working with Nate. Nate working on on my own uh, equipment. So I just wanted to have another set of eyes. Uh, sometimes. I might rush through something of, of my own equipment, have a new baby at home, so trying oh, yeah. to even find the time to do that. Uh, it's, it's a lot easier for me to be away from the house to do this compared yeah. to being in the house to do it. So I really just want to, Nate uh, does a phenomenal job and, and to really set me up for, hopefully for some success this spring and, and summer and worst case scenario, it's, it's, it's a perfectly tuned bow and I couldn't be more happier and I'm, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, man. And if you guys are ever, if you're living in the central Pennsylvania area or anywhere else in the Northeast, you want to come down, we're here at 21 North Front Street in Phillipsburg, PA. Uh, we'll work on your Elite, your Athens, your Bowtech, your Prime, your Hoyt, your PSC, whatever you got, we will definitely work on it for you. We're a dealer of lots of different brands of accessories, broadheads, arrows, targets, whatever you need. Uh, we'll definitely get you taken care of. Uh, and in the interim, I hope you're able to get outside, enjoy the sport of archery. Archery hunting, if you so choose, definitely enjoy God's beautiful creation and antler up. Antler up. <laughs> I like Thanks, it. buddy. Thank Absolutely. you, Nate. Absolutely.